Okay, my BC kids, we're into P series and the harmonic series in section 10.5. These are really super duper simple compared to some of the other ones that we've done. So you might like this section. <clears throat> it says a P series. Let P be a positive constant. It has to be a positive, get my highlight ready, constant of this series, 1 over n to the p. The series converges if p is greater than 1, and the series diverges if p is between 0 and 1, uh, n equal to. There you go. And you say, what does that mean? And we'll see in some examples in just a second. There's something also called a harmonic series, which is very similar to the P series. It looks like this. You have a sum that goes from 1 to infinity, n equals 1 to infinity, of 1 over n. Remember they can't touch this graph? Kind of that idea. And what happens with this guy is you've got 1 plus 1 half. Think about that if n were 1, if n were 2, if n were 3 plus 1 over 3 plus, it keeps going, uh, till you have 1 over n. Now, this guy actually diverges, which seems a little strange and is counterintuitive to what you would think. But if I think about adding 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth, and I keep going, I'm actually not going to converge on a particular number. And so this one actually is a diverging thing, and there's always lots of controversy over this. I will attach a video to our classroom page that does a better explanation for that, but to give you a further explanation for it, I should say. All right, so here, let's try a couple. See how this guy is, one over n to the three. What's p? p is the power. What's my power? My power is three. Well, all right. If my power is greater than 1, it converges. 3 is greater than 1, therefore this guy converges by the p-series. Done. This one, what's my power? Now, we know square roots. This would be the same thing as if I wrote this as a sum going from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 1 half power. Well, now my p equals 1 half. My p then is between 0 and 1, so I know that this guy diverges. So um, since p is 1 half, I know that this guy diverges by the p-series test. Oh, p-series. I guess I should put test here. Test, the test. All right, they're the first ones. Do these converge or do they diverge? There's an example of each. Now it says, okay, for what values of k will the series converge? Converge. Well, converging means that my p has to be greater than 1. So that means my power has to be greater than 1. What's my power on that guy? My power is 2k minus 5 has to be greater than 1. Okay, let's solve it out for k. Add 5 on, 2k is greater than 6, divide by 2, k is greater than 3, and so that's when it's going to converge. If k, for what values of k will the series converge when k is greater than 3? Well, not everybody's going to be quite so simple. This guy's asking the same question, but they give us a little bit of a more hairy situation here. So my power is not just 2k. This is a k, an n to the first. This guy's an n to the 2k. If you're multiplying like bases, what do you do with their powers? And you say you add them up. So this would be the same thing as 1 over n to the 2k plus 1. All right, well, to converge, my power has to be greater than 1. My power is 2k plus 1, greater than 1. Take the subtract 1, 2k equals 0, divide by, oh, not equal, greater than. 
uh, divide by 2, I get a k that is greater than 0. And you've solved that out. So you just start to manipulate that a little bit first. Now the next one is a little bit tricky because see I've got now not 1 over, now I have an n over, and so that means I need to factor out an n. I need to get it into 1 over, into that 1 over situation. And so I'm going to play with this a little bit algebraically by factoring out an n. Let me show you what it looks like. n equals 1 to infinity of n over n times 1 over n. Now if I factor out an n, now I'm at 4k okay, minus 1. And if I factor out an n from this 5, the 5 doesn't even have an n. That means I have to put it with an n. It's going to be 5 over n. Now think about that. Am I right? n times n to the 4k minus 1 is going to be n to the 4k. And if I take n times 5 over n, then I have uh, the n's canceling. It's just going to be a 5. And if I have n times 1 in my numerator, I have an n. So this is really a true weirdism of math that I have factored out an n, and here's what it looks like now. The only thing about that, well, n over n is 1, so that cancels. And 5 over n, remember n's going to infinity, so this becomes infinity, which then makes the fraction 0. So all this to be said, I really am left with just 1 over n to the 4k minus 1. Well, 4k minus 1, for this to converge, has to be greater than 1. So I did all that manipulation to get a power on the n that says 4k minus 1 has to be greater than 1. Bring the 1 over, now I have 4k is greater than 2. Divide by 4. k is greater than 2 fourths or 1 half. And there are your values for what it has to be. Did you see me all? There you go. Ooh. Take a moment. Check it out because I didn't have it all on the, on the screen. So things we should recognize now, we've got several tests we've learned over the last several sections. We know geometric series, they have to have an R. We know now the harmonic series, 1 over n, diverges. We know P series, these functions when you've got a power in the denominator, if P is greater than 1, it converges. If P is a fraction, then it diverges between 0 and 1. Uh, the nth term test, that was the one where you take the limit. And then the integral test is the one we did in the last section, section 10.4. So they're reminding you of all the various tests that we've talked about in the last several sections. Don't forget, because it's just going to say when these problems come up, pretty much they're going to say, do these converge or do these diverge? And they're not going to tell you which test to use. All right, so let's look at some practice problems. That's it for the notes. I picked a few. The first one I picked is number 4. And number 4 says, what are the values of p for which this converges? And so this is like what we just did. We have to now figure out what the power is and make sure it's greater than 1. So this is a one, another one of those where, see, it's in a weird format. So I am going to factor out an n, just like I did in that last guy. And again, I tend to pick the ones that I think you might be a little more confused on. So let's see. If I have this guy, oh gosh, that's a really bad summation sign. I'm bad at them anyway. All right, here we go. n equals 1 to infinity. If I factor out an n, that's going to be an n. And then I'm going to have a times 2. That's my numerators. Right? If I factor out an n on the bottom, that's going to make this an n. Factor it out. This is going to be the n. It was p, but now it's p minus 1 because I took one away. And then it's going to be plus 2, my constant, over n. Again, multiply it back. n times 2 is 2n. n times n to the p minus 1 is going to be n to the p. 
n times 2 over n, the n's cancel and I've got a 2. So all of that, it, the math police are not going to take me away for all of that. If I look at this, remember, this guy goes to 0 because n is infinity. This guy cancels. And so I'm left with a 2 over n to the p minus 1. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a 1 or it's a 2 or whatever that numerator is. You've got the power of p minus 1 that has to converge, in other words, be greater than 1. And so my p would have to be greater than 2. For what values of p is it converging? And there you go. Next one I picked was number two, number five, which is actually a diverge question. Right now it's asking when is it going to diverge? And so if I look at this one and play the same fancy pants games to it, I have now a sum that's going from n equals 1 to infinity. It's a 1 in the numerator. But how could I manipulate this to be a power, see this is an n, Th same thing, I'm going to factor out an n, and so I'm going to put that for this guy too. I did it for this guy, I'm going to do it for this guy, factor out an n. That's going to give me an n factored out to the n 3p, but how, if I factor 1 away, then I've got to make it minus 1. If I factor out an n, then this is a plus 1 kind of thing. So I know that my power on n is this 3p minus 1. That has to, if it's diverging, then 3p minus 1 has to be between 0 and 1. Isn't that what that inequality said back in diverging territory. So this is like a triple guy. Whatever I do to one piece, I have to do all three pieces. So I'm going to add one, and then I'm going to divide by three. And doesn't that tell me exactly where my p has to stay? It has to be between one-third and two-thirds to di diverge. Alright, next one I picked was number nine. We're almost done. This one says, find the positive values for p for which the infinite series converges. Oh, this one's a little bit more tricky. This one is actually... <coughs> oh gosh, sorry, there's Levi. He sounds deadly, but he's really very nice. Alright, if I look at this one. This one, I'm looking converging. It is not a straight up p-series kind of thing. Uh, it's not like I can factor out an n because here I have an n squared. It's just not that simple. So here's what I need to do with this guy. I need to think about the integral test because it doesn't fit a geometric series test. It doesn't hit an nth term test, but let's think about the integral test. So let me put a little note here. This is I'm thinking integral test and I'm going to see where it takes me. By the way, if you choose a test and it doesn't take you on a good route, choose a different test. There's all sorts of different ways you can decide if they're going to converge or diverge. Now the messiest part of this is the n squared uh, plus 1, which means that du equals 2n dn. I can see I've got an n, so I'm going to put this as 1 half du equals an n dn. All right, let's check out the integral test, right? It's going from 1 to infinity, so here's my integral. The integral goes from uh, 1 to b, or 1 to infinity. I'll keep it this way for now, improper as it is. And if I substitute in, my n dn is equal to 1 half du, and this would be 1 over u to the p, wouldn't it? So I've got 1 over u to the p times 1 half uh, du. So I'm looking at this, so 1 half can come out in front, right? So I've got 1 half the integral from 1 to infinity. And if I look at this, and it really, I guess, if I were thinking this all the way through, it's the limit as n approaches infinity, or I think we were using b. So b approaches infinity 
and we call this a B. I'll keep it the way we've been talking about it, just to be consistent. This is a B. All right, so now I've got 1 over u to the p du. Well, what do you know about p in order for this thing to converge? Well, you know the p in this, if I were to take the integral and look at this, p has to be greater than 1 in order for this to converge. That's the end of the story. They said, for what values of p does this converge? Well, when p is greater than 1, then you've got a converging situation. That's it. Okay, I think there might be one or two more real fast. I have number 11 on my list. Here's number 11. This one now they notice they say which the following converge. They don't tell you what um, series to, or like what test to use. You've got to think about what test is going to work. Let's check it out. This first one, if I were to rewrite this, this and this is really not well written. This is a negative one half. Do you see how that doesn't look much like a negative one half? But it is. Now, what would that look like if I were to rewrite it? n equals one to infinity. Negative one half power would be one over n to the one half power. And if that's the case, then I know my p is 1 half. And think about that. 1 half is between 0 and 1, which means that this guy diverges. What was the question? Which of the following infin seri infinite series converge? Well, he doesn't do it. This guy is very interesting because now it's to the nth power. When you see something to the nth power, you should be thinking about a geometric series. This one I should say, uh, I should say by p series. You always want to identify which test you're using. This guy I'm going to use the geometric series, and I know that if I were to look at this as a negative power, don't forget what negative powers do when you're a fraction. When you're a fraction, they flip you. So this is really 2 over e to the nth power flip it, now it's positive power. So I see that this guy's a geometric series, and so my ratio is 2 over e. Well, 2 over 2.7 is going to be less than 1, and therefore I know that this guy converges by the geometric series, geo series test. Then I get to the next guy, 1 over n to the e. Oh, I'm back to a p series. Well, my p is equal to e. e is 2.71. e is greater than 1, and therefore I know that this guy converges by the p series test. All right, so what's my question asking me? Which ones converge? And I say 2 and 3. That would be e. All right, last one, number 16. Here we go. 16. I thought this one might stump you. It's not as horrible as you think it might be. Find the positive values of k for which this series, holy moly, ln, 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 converges. And you look at that and you say, well, that's just a hot mess. But I can tell you that you could equal the ln of the ln of, K, of n, which means du equals, see if you can get this, 1 over the ln of n times, what's the derivative of this, 1 over n, and that's du. I'm sorry, dn, dn, the end. DN. So what does dn equal? If I were to solve this, if I move this to the other side, multiply both sides by the ln of n, then I get an ln of n. If I multiply both sides by an n, I get an n. And so that's what du would equal, the n times the ln of n, 
And so if I look at this right here and do a direct uh, use substitution on it, n dn n dn of n, who is this guy? And then I have um, this is du over here. I should have du. Du. Hold on a minute. This side is my. <laughs> This side is my D. Let me go back. If I multiply both sides by ln of n, then it comes over here. And that makes this side my du and this side my dn. Sorry about that. Direct substitution into here is um, going to give me the integral going from, now notice what my sub number is it's a 3 to infinity of 1 over u to the k see how it's a k power and I'm doing my direct substitution and all the rest of this becomes my du and so when I look at this integral test then I know my power k has to stay to converge greater than 1 and so that's your final answer. Find the positive values of k for which the series converges. You use the integral test on it, and it turns out that your power has to stay greater than 1 in order for this thing to converge. And that is number 16. And that takes us out of section 10.5, harmonic and p-series. All right, shoot me a text if you have any questions, and I will see you in class.